Listen, there are some amazing cozy Nintendo Switch games out there. And there are also some real duds. <laughs> Hello my loves, it's Monica and welcome back to my channel. Today I am super excited because I am back with a new cozy Nintendo Switch games video for you all. I have been playing quite a few games over the past few months and I cannot wait to tell you all about each of them, the ones that I think are worth getting and the ones that at least were not for me. Also, if this happens to be your first time on my channel, hi, welcome. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss future videos, especially if you love cozy games, books, and vlogs. So for me, when it comes to picking the cozy games that I want to play or talk about with you guys, the first step is always research, and that especially takes place using search. I'm always searching for upcoming releases, new announcements, date changes, platform changes, and of course reviews, and that is such a huge part of what I look into when I'm deciding what games I want to personally spend my money on, which I think is why Ecosia is such a perfect sponsor for this video, and I'm also really excited to be working with them because I care so much about the environment, and so many cozy games I know also care and talk about and prioritize the environment in the gameplay, which I think is amazing. It's one of my favorite parts about cozy gaming, to be honest. So next time you're searching for new cozy games, why not also help the planet too by using Ecosia? And Ecosia, for those who are unaware, is a purpose-driven search engine, and they dedicate 100% of their profits to the planet which is amazing. Here's how it works. Like all other search engines, when you search anything, display ads are shown alongside your search results. And when you click on those ads, that's how search engines make money. But Ecosia stands out because they use those funds to fight climate change and environmental injustice. All of Ecosia's profits go towards climate action. They invest 20% in renewable energy, regenerative agriculture, and grassroots activism. The remaining 80% goes towards planting and protecting trees around the world. And they're super transparent. You can check out their financial reports on their website. Lastly, I love that on the Ecosia homepage, you can see the impact counter, and this is the estimate of how many trees the Ecosia community have helped plant. And as you search, more trees get planted. Ecosia makes it so easy for you to care about the climate every day, which I love. And if you would like to plant some trees with me, you can use the link in my description box to download Ecosia onto your mobile or desktop. Thank you so much to Ecosia for partnering with me for this video. I'm always so excited when I get to partner with a brand like this that I just like am so passionate about. But anyways, moving on to the cozy games that I have been playing. And the first one that I'm excited to talk about is Palia. Palia is a cozy MMORPG. Think World of Warcraft minus the Warcraft or World of Warcraft meets Stardew Valley. You're doing all those sort of farming sim things. You're, you have a farm, you have a house to renovate and build up, you have townspeople to meet and build relationships with, you have places to explore, animals to hunt, things to forage for, all of those sort of traditional things that you'll see in these sort of like task management farming sim style games. I feel like, to be honest, the anticipation for this game is kind of what maybe killed it a little bit for me. Oof, I hate saying that, but as much as I was so excited for this game, I have to say that I have not picked it up in weeks. And I really did give it a good shot. Like I had a few days where I spent hours playing this game, trying to get myself to like get into it. And there were a couple of days where I was excited about it, but just as the game progressed, it just felt like just really grindy and kind of boring. Also, I would say like the biggest frustration that I had were definitely the glitches. I'm hoping that that is something that will just get better over time, but also like having a huge amount of people playing this one game at the same time, I'm sure is like super heavy on their server. And that's something that they're just going to have to adapt to over time. Actually, let's start off with the good on Palia. First, I really liked the music. I thought the ambiance was lovely. I feel like the purchasable items were fair. You know, like it wasn't anything, at least as far as I've gotten the game, it wasn't anything where I felt like without purchasing items, I couldn't have fun in the game or play the game to its fullest. It was more like nice-to-haves versus must-haves, which I really appreciated. Maybe that's something that I'll change in the future, but as of right now, that's how I felt. I thought the dialogue was fun. I love all the characters. I also love the customization you're able to do. I thought that the actual world looks very pretty. It actually looked prettier than I was expecting. I was expecting like the actual graphics of the game to be like 
honestly like really ugly <laughs> but I was pleasantly surprised I thought the game was like pretty delightful to be inside of and I enjoyed that but outside of that I just kind of felt like there wasn't really anything that compelled me to be in the game like nothing really made me super excited for the next day when I go and pick the game up on my switch and play again and I feel like a big part of that is because there really isn't as far as I got like progression elements like there's nothing that really pushes you and the story forward at least not early on in the game and I feel like if you can't hook me after playing the game for multiple hours across multiple days like that's your chance right like that should be like when I'm the most excited about this game or at least getting really excited about it and I just I feel like the longer I played it the less and less excited and into the game I got which was really disappointing yeah in general I just found it to be really grindy I'm not usually a huge fan of just like grinding for like materials and things especially if that's like all you're really doing and then I felt like the community element like the whole like having other players in the world it just kind of felt like it was underutilized like and I've I'm gonna be so honest here I've never played an MMORPG before so like maybe this is normal but I think I just thought that there was going to be there's gonna be have like more integration of that into the actual gameplay like there was gonna be more of a push for you to collaborate and meet other players and I just really didn't get that you can do like tasks for other players or make requests but I don't know I just I found that to be kind of annoying because half the time any request I got was for something that like in no way shape or form could I ever give to someone like I was kind of hoping for community events or elements in the story that encouraged you to interact with other players in order to progress in your own story I don't that's what I was kind of thinking and maybe that's just bad on my part like wrong expectations but I think that's what I would have needed in order for this game to really hook me and I will say this is one that I kind of want to give some time maybe come back in a few months and see what updates have happened and how the story and how the game has progressed and maybe by then I'll be so into it and it'll be amazing and I'll love it. Who knows if you this is, if you're watching this months later and you're loving Palia let me know because I am not opposed to trying it out and I will also say the game is free so even though I did not love it and I kind of fell off the bandwagon pretty quickly I 100% think every single person who has a Nintendo Switch should download the game like just try it it's free you have nothing to lose and you might find a game that you love it might be the perfect game for you so that's kind of where I am with it I would just say like don't make any in-game purchases until you've played for a few days and you know for sure you really like the game because I'm very thankful that I did not I was about to buy an outfit like the second I downloaded that game and I didn't I told myself I was gonna wait and I'm so glad I did because I'd be so annoyed with myself I also think that this game was almost too lax for me I feel like I kind of do need a little bit of pressure like with Stardew Valley there is that like clock you know the clock is ticking you only have so much time per day to do everything and so that really helps you like manage your time and push you forward and kind of add a bit of excitement into the game versus with this game I feel like there just really wasn't any pressure and because there are like no consequences for anything it felt like it also just made doing tasks and like getting things done or you know trying to do things well it just felt I just really didn't feel any like impetus to do things and I know that that's like the cozy part of it right is that it's very low stress and I don't want a game to be stressful but I do want to like have some sort of push I do feel like I just need that for me personally I need like something to make me want to progress in a game and this just kind of didn't have that for me next up we have Coral Island and this is another one that had so so much hype and I'll be so honest by the time this game did come out on Nintendo Switch I to be honest was feeling a bit of like farming sim fatigue I just I'm gonna talk about this in a minute like after this review but like yeah I just didn't know if I wanted to play this one at all because I didn't want that feeling to 
dampen my feelings of this game like to basically make me dislike this game not because the game is bad but because I simply just cannot deal with the fact that there are so many farming sims that are kind of identical but I'm so glad I ignored that and played it anyways because I love this game this is definitely in my top three farming sim games of all time like I feel like my rotation right now is like this and Disney Dreamlight Valley and I sometimes I'll tap back into Stardew Valley but Disney Dreamlight Valley and Coral Island they are my queens right now. Again, you have all those sort of classic elements that you find in other farming sim games, meeting villagers, building relationships, farming, etc. However, this game has so many unique elements. So first of all, we have the festivals. Obviously, we have festivals in Stardew Valley. I love the festivals in Stardew Valley, and they're done so, so well in Coral Island. I especially love that so many of them are cultural and inspired by Indonesian culture. They just feel so unique and fun and fresh and like actually like really exciting when they happen and yeah so I love the festivals I love the mer people I love the underwater element in general and just like the environmental elements so, like one of the big element parts of this game is that you go you do diving do diving you dive <laughs> and while you're underwater you collect trash and clean up the area and that's a big part of the gameplay and I love that again I am a big fan of just how much the environment just seems to be such a big part of a lot of cozy games and like loving the environment celebrating the environment and protecting the environment like those are such huge themes in cozy gaming and I just love that and I especially loved it in this game I thought it was really delightful oh my gosh also the relationships guys you have 28 people to build relationships with which is an amazing amount of like there's so many characters to meet and to like get to know and to build relations it's just oh, it's so like the world is just so good and so well thought out i love the conversations with people and i love the fact that they are actively updating the game so apparently they're going to be adding even more updates for the mer people so you can like get to know them even more and then also more elements for like even after you get married so that you can continue building relationships and like friendships with people outside of your marriage and even being able to like host tourists like I'm excited about the fact that it's a game that I'm really enjoying playing that I love just like diving into every day but that I also know that eventually when I've kind of gotten to the end of the game that there's going to eventually be more content that they're going to continue up dating it i love that i like we need more of that but yeah this is genuinely like when it comes to the farming sim genre this is like the the ideal of what that genre can be and i am so happy that i played it and pushed through my own hesitations because it is so good and if you're hesitating on this one for a similar reason i highly recommend picking it up it is just fantastic so well done with that being said i need I need game developers to recognize that not every cozy game has to be a farming sim and they also don't have to like you can also do a similar style of gameplay and it doesn't have to be on a farm right like we could do like task manager kind of games and they can they could be in other places like you could set it in a city in Tokyo and maybe you're you you know you're a you work as an intern in fashion and you work your way up to becoming like the editor-in-chief of a fashion magazine wouldn't that be so fun and instead of like farming every day you're like running tasks for people and as you move up in the fashion world your tasks change and get bigger or maybe oh my gosh my dream maybe you're a princess in a fantasy world and so your tasks include maybe you do have a little garden but then you also have like diplomats that you have to meet and be diplomatic with and build relationships with there maybe you have beasts that you need to slay, princes that you need to marry. Like, I just wish that we could reimagine what this genre could be and think outside the box and just give us more interesting stories. But I think like you could use similar mechanics, similar types of gameplay, and use them to create new and interesting and fun worlds that people can play in. And I just, I just need that to happen. <laughs>
in, <laughs> please. Anyways, rant over. Let's talk about Fashion Dreamer. I was, again, this was a very hyped game for me also, and I will say I am super happy that I took the time to go onto Ecosia and do a little search and see the reviews because that really helped me set my expectations for this game because I think like everyone else, I was expecting it to be like, oh, what's that style style something that like old DS game that we all loved and to have a bit more of like an actual progression and gameplay to it and so seeing other people's reviews and the fact that they were frustrated that that wasn't a thing allowed me to set expectations and it didn't stop me from wanting to download the game because at least I knew what I was getting into and I was still excited for that because if you are someone like me who would play the sims but would only really like to do the part where you get to like dress and decorate your sim and like not actually play the sims or if you were really into those like doll games when you were on like the early internet back in the day uh yeah i think you'll really like this game because literally all it is is like putting together outfits and yeah you get like scored on things whatever and you can share your outfits and you can like find other people's outfits and like items of clothing and everything but there really isn't like actual progression or gameplay outside of that like that's pretty much all that the game is but if that appeals to you like it does to me that's something that like you enjoy it's a great game it's great for that now <laughs> i do still have an issue and my big issue with this game is the actual like diversity of character and this is like what's really confusing to me because there are so many clothes like there's so many options when it comes to the fashion in the game and so i'm so confused why like the gender roles are so rigid you cannot like if you choose a body type that is more like feminine then you cannot use any of like the male clothes and to like in general there's like very little body diversity which is also annoying like i don't even need the gameplay element i love just dressing people up in cute clothes but if you're gonna have the game be that then like give me different body types and give me just like diversity in general and that was something that mm, kind of frustrated me and like made the game a little bit less than stellar. My penultimate game is Witchy Life Story, and I wish I could say this was a more positive review. <sighs> Listen, I just personally think you should only buy this game if you can get it on like mega sale, like five dollars <laughs> or something. I just, this game was twenty dollars, and I think I got like two maybe three hours of gameplay out of it and I have absolutely zero interest of like replay I just don't feel like it has any good like replay value to it and I'm so sorry it is very cute like the art style is lovely I love the diversity of character like, this has the opposite problem of like fashion fashion dreamer where I love the diversity of like genders and the way that you can customize the way that your character looks I feel like that is so well done so perfectly done like honestly should be used by all other game developers in for inspiration on how to do their character builders it's so good this is mostly a text-based game you play as a young witch who is the youngest member of this witch family and your grandmother has kind of almost given up on teaching you to be a witch you've kind of just failed a lot and so you have two weeks in order to help this village prepare for their harvest festival and set them up for success and that's sort of your task you have a familiar and you get to meet villagers and build relationships and romantic relationships and just like in general like the story just was not very compelling to me and there's like a lot of story so if you if, if you don't like the story you're not gonna like this game and if you don't like the writing you're not gonna like this game so maybe like look up a few screenshots see if you jive with the writing and if you do then maybe you will enjoy this game more than I did um, I will also say that I was kind of frustrated that I feel like romance was really a big part of the selling point of this game and in terms of like actual romanceable characters there's only like three and that just feels like a low number for a, a game that that's a you know kind of a hinge point of the game especially when you do have other games like Coral Island where you have 28 options and it's like 
I don't know your where you was money money is tight for everybody and I have to be honest of like where I think it makes sense to spend your money and for me if someone were to say I have a limited budget to devote to cozy games I my number one recommendation right now would probably be Coral Island yeah especially if you do want that sort of relationship building element and there are also like if you really like a very text heavy story heavy game there are also like really beautiful story heavy games out there that are like so well written this one just just wasn't one of them unfortunately yeah guys we're ending on a good note because this next one is another new love of mine and this is another it's a simple game but it just oh, it just does it so well and this game is potion craft and this game has become my new favorite bedtime game like for me my perfect night is I get my potion craft on Nintendo Switch loaded up, I get my tea, I lower the lights in my bedroom, I have my projector going with some ambiance, and I just become my alchemist potion making ideal self. It's amazing. I feel like I'm in a fantasy novel. In Potion Craft, you brew potions and you haggle with customers who come in making various and sometimes nefarious requests for potions, and you get to decide who you make potions for or who you don't make potions for, and those de decisions also have an impact on your reputation as an alchemist. And as you create potions for people, you level up and you're able to get more powerful ingredients to make more powerful potions. And yeah, I just really enjoy this game. It's such a like chill time, but I love the world and I love like I love getting to go to all the different areas. I will say that the map part, there's like this part where you have to kind of brew potions in order to get around a map in order to get new ingredients and that can get kind of grindy so if you don't like that part of the gameplay you might not like this game because that's a huge part of the game but i really like that mechanism i just think it's really fun i find it really satisfying to play so i enjoy it um but yeah that's your mileage may vary with that one i would recommend this one to people who enjoyed coffee talk or strange horticulture if you enjoy fantasy books like if you're a robin hobb girly you need to get this game because it just feels like an old school fantasy novel but like you're in it and that's so fun. Those are the games that I've recently been playing and my honest reviews of each of them. I would love to hear from you guys what you've been playing especially if you've been loving a game recently. Please let me know because I'm trying really hard this year to be very intentional about the games that I choose to play and talk about. I feel like you know when cozy gaming first started a few years ago or at least when like that the idea of cozy gaming really took off you know I kind of just wanted to talk about and play everything but we've gotten to this point where there are so many options and so we really do have to be like a little bit more strategic for lack of a better word in like what games we choose to play and just like doing more research and making those decisions and in recommending them to other people so that's really my plan for this year but if you guys are playing anything that you're absolutely loving i would love to hear your thoughts on them if you've played any of these games i'd also love to hear your thoughts on them especially if you loved a game that i didn't love and vice versa because i always think that's interesting to understand like the mechanics that work for some people that might not work for others just personally i i just think that's fun to talk about so i would love to hear your thoughts on that even if you vehemently disagree with me on anything all opinions are valid here but yeah thank you all so so much for watching i hope you enjoyed and again if you haven't be sure to subscribe so you don't miss future cozy content from me and you can also find me over on instagram and tiktok for lots of fashion, bookish, lifestyle, all that kind of content over there. And I will talk to y'all next time. Bye!